So let's see a single degree of freedom system of a simple mass and spring. If we put the center of gravity of the mass as the reference point, and let's say this is the positions when the mass is at rest, we call it the equilibrium position. Equilibrium positions. And then we set the system into motion. You can see that the fluctuating dot here represents the positions of the center of the mass with respect to time. Okay? So we can see if the mass is going down, the dot is going down, if it's going up, the dot is going up, and so on and so forth. With respect to time means at 1 second it's maximum, at 2 seconds it's minimum, at 3 seconds it's maximum again, at 4 seconds it's minimum, and so on and so forth. Okay? So how far the center of the mass moves from these equilibrium positions is called the amplitudes of vibrations. So we can denote this one as xt, let's say. So meaning x as the functions of time. And then we can see that the graph of the amplitudes of vibrations of the system here looks like a sine function. So we can represent this with the mathematical functions which is xt equals to a sine omega t plus theta. So a here is the maximum amplitudes of vibrations because we know that the maximum value of sine is 1 so we end up with xt maximum equals to a so this is actually the peak value of the vibrations okay the omega here is the angular frequency of the system which indicates how many times the center reached the maximum peak in one second for example so the time taken from one peak to the next peak we call it the period which is t equals to 1 over the frequency so the omega equals to 2 pi multiplied by the frequency so then the period equals to 2 pi over omega If we increase the omega or we increase the frequency then we reduce the period which means we have a shorter durations from peak to peak so if we have a smaller value of period so then we should have a graph which looks like this one so where we have the distance between these two minimums value here is shorter than the previous one okay so we can imagine that the time taken for the center of the mass to go from one peak to another peak is much faster now meaning that at higher frequency the motions of this mass becomes faster theta here is the phase of the system which indicates the positions of the center of the mass with respect to the equilibrium positions so in this case uh, theta is zero okay so let's draw the mathematical models of the mass spring system so the mass has amplitude xt And we know that the equation of motions from this model is straightforward mx double dot plus kx equals to zero. And we know that the response of the system follows the functions of xt equals to a sine omega t. And if we substitute 
this xt back into the equations of motions okay so let's first do with x dot which is the x over dt so this is the first derivative of xt with respect to t so what we have is a omega cos omega t and then the second one for the x double dot which is the second derivative of xt so first derivative of cos is minus sine so we have minus a omega multiplied by omega which is omega square and then sine omega t now we substitute the x double dot to the equation of motions so then we have minus m a omega square sine omega t plus k a sine omega t equals to zero so if we move this term to the other side of the equations then we have m a omega square sine omega t equals to k a sine omega t so we can cancel out sine omega t and also a so what we left finally is omega square equals to k over m so omega is square root of k over m this omega is called the natural frequency which is the frequency of motions of a system without any external force driving the system we'll discuss later on how the system will behave if there is an external force exciting the system with the frequency equals to the natural frequency the phenomenon called resonance which should be avoided in any engineering applications okay guys hope you understand the concept and hope you enjoy the video see you again bye bye